Now, here we have one of my favorite all-time cars. I like these so much that I have one. I have a 541R, it's a Jensen 541. This one is a Jensen 541, it's a 1955 model and it comes with the drum brakes. So the 541s had drum brakes, the 541 Deluxe had disc brakes all around, the 541Rs had the disc brakes and rack and pinion steering. This has got steering box steering. So Jensen's were making, Jensen were making um, sort of fine cars and were sort of well ahead of their time in uses of materials. So this is largely a fiberglass car. So you've got a big fiberglass bonnet here. You've got a big fiberglass clamshell roof there and back end and of course uh, the boot lid. But the doors are aluminium. But extensive use of the new material of course comes with uh, you know the foibles of that type of material. So this does have great patination, but I love it as it is. You've got a few star cracks where a stone may have chipped away at it kind of thing, but I think it's pretty rare to find a car that still retains what I think is probably its original paint finish uh, with touching in here and there and maybe a new vinyl roof put on there. But I think it looks absolutely stonking. If I were buying it, I would keep it as is and use it. The interior appears to be original as well, which is great. So you've got a great starting point. If you want to restore the hell out of this car, you can, at least you've got all the parts there with it. But got some quirky bits to this. Now, what we do have is this flap, which opens and closes. Now, with it closed, the drag coefficient of this body is very, very low, so you can go at high speed, slips through the air. But of course, when you're going very fast, you'll want that engine to be cooled. So you can open that up and make sure that you can monitor and regulate the, uh, the, the engine coolant temperature. Now, if we lift up here, we should have two spring telescopic struts. Hold on, let's get that one. Hold on. Right. So here we have a stonking great 3,993cc engine. So it's a, it's a four litre engine. Now the engine was built by Austin. It's a triple carburetor engine. So this is the DS7 engine. So this is not the cross flow head. This is the, uh, this is, uh, it has the inlets and exhaust all on, all on one side. But it's an overhead valve engine. In this application, it's very understressed because relatively speaking, you've got quite a lightweight car, which is very high geared. So these cars are good for well in excess of 100 miles per hour. I think on the, on the books, there was something like 120, 125 miles per hour, which is phenomenal for the time. But the engines were built by Austin. They're a very slow revving, slogging engine, and they've got a great gutsy sound to them. Uh, and obviously four liters, topping out at around about 4,000 revs per minute. So actually all the grunt is really low down there. I think that's a great looking engine bay there. And you can get to everything as well. Look how easy that is. You're straight in. I absolutely adore these cars. So let's put that down. And then there are these little aluminium nuts here, which clamp the, clamp the, the bonnet down and there it's all safe and sound. So the underpinnings of this, again, sourced from Austin. Jensen and Austin had a long lasting relationship, uh, which pretty much finished up with the uh, the Austin Healey 3000s. So all of those Austin Healey 3000s were at least, I think, finished off at Jensen's, if not the bodies were built by there, but they were certainly, certainly put together. But what a great place to be this is. It's seen some work, but it looks to me as if the original seats have been refurbished. Now, they used great quality leather at Jensen's, and so I'm not surprised that this has managed to be saved. 
And then this being an earlier car, later ones had Moss gearboxes. This one's got the Austin gearbox. And so you've got that beautiful, quirky, offset gear, gear selector or gear lever there, which I love. Again, quite sort of ancient in its concept. And I think, you know, sort of it's quite, a, quite an old design of gearbox. But again, just brilliant. A beautiful place to be. You've got four seats, which is brilliant as well. That lovely maroon vinyl roof. The colour scheme, I think, is stonking. You've got the bumpers, which is, again, you, everything comes with this car. And then, of course, you've got this quirky bottom hinged uh, boot lid here. But you do have quite a lot of space in there. And on this particular car, the rear seats fold forwards. So they're on little clips, so they'll fold forwards. So if you want to put your skis in there, in they go. Not quite a surfboard though. But why would you want to go surfing if you've got a Jensen 541? All in all, what we have here is a beautiful 1950s Grand Tourer. They're lovely and so rare to see on the roads. They only made a few hundred of each of the types. And so, of course, this is a, you know, a rare car by any means, really. It always was a rare car. This one is estimated at 28 to 32,000 pounds. It has uh, a, a, an interesting uh, owner in its past. Uh, the chap who played the drums on XTC's, uh, I believe, uh, making plans for Nigel and other tracks as well. So he's a session drummer, uh, unfortunately no longer with us, but what a tasting cars he had. This is a beauty, utterly beautiful. I love it, as I say, I would keep it as is, but you may see differently. I've had a little peek underneath. The chassis seems to be in reasonable order, although I haven't had it fully up on a ramp and I haven't given it a full inspection. Uh, it has been driven with a fuel can attached. Um, there is a new fuel tank that comes with this as well, as well as a, a number of other spares and also some of the original interior that's at so carpets and stuff like that that have been replaced in recent times. All in all, a well-loved and well-cared-for car. I think this deserves a caring new owner. I wish it were me.